Hello you all this video is the second part of the polystyrene thermolysis. This little video series was supposed to show the potential recycling of polystyrene. Therefore we started with PS which was reduced in volume by dissolving it in acetone, then the PS was thermalized and now the crude styrene was fractionally destiled in a vacuum, and again polymerized using some dibenzoyl peroxide. In the last video we obtained the crude styrene and stabilized it with some hydroquinone. So now we have to fractionally destill the whole thing in a vacuum. Therefore I set up a fitting apparatus and hooked the condenser and the vacuum pump up to the water line. The reason why we have to do a fractional vacuum destillation is the reactivity of the carbon-carbon double bond in the styrene. As styrene can polymerize on its own we have to reduce the temperature during the destillation as much as we can, to reduce the speed of the cell polymerization. Secondly we have to get rid of any oxygen because oxygen and light especially in combination with high temperatures initiate a polymerization of our styrene. So that explains why we have to do a vacuum destillation, but why a fractional vacuum destillation? That is easy to explain due to the process we used, the thermolysis, we have some impurities that came from pyrolysis reactions that occurred due to high temperatures. Examples for such impurities are benzene toluene and many others, all of them have a boiling point near to that of styrene and some even form a zeotrope. So we have to put some kind of column in between the boiling flask and the condenser to get a better separation and a product of higher quality. The first fraction came over from 25 degrees Celsius and I destiled further until it got over 35 degrees Celsius. Up until this moment there was no clean fraction, this can be seen at the density blurs new destillate makes when it hits the old one. But after the first fraction there was a bigger one just under 37 degrees Celsius. Beautiful aren't they? Beautiful but, carcinogenic. After each fraction I detached the vacuum and prepared a flask with some hydroquinone as a stabilizer to counter any polymerization and prolong the storing time. Normally you add something like 100 ppm but I went with the more is better route. So as the temperature increased I stopped the destillation and filled the fraction in my prepared 50 milliliter flask and put it aside. And here is where it gets funny, I don't know why but every time I put the vacuum back on the destillation mixture began to foam like crazy but never reached the condenser. Anyway as you can see here there are no more density blurs indicating that we have a very pure fraction. When there was only a small amount of crude styrene left I ended the destillation and filled the third fraction in a little bottle. And as always I added some hydroquinone to stabilize it. But now is the question is this really styrene or am I a noob and you don't even realize it. Therefore we have to perform some tests. The first test I want to make is looking if this has the polymerization properties of styrene. 
To do this I set up a water bath with a test tube and a magnetic stirrer. And then add some of the potential styrene into the test tube, but keep in mind this stuff does not have the 100% reactivity due to the already added hydroquinone. To the product we add some of the dibenzoyl peroxide we made in an earlier video, that is currently only on Bitchute due to the strike I got, link to it is in the video description. So now to explain what is happening here. The dibenzoyl peroxide undergoes a homolytic thermical splitting into two benzoyloxy radicals, these benzoyloxy radicals then decompose under CO2 elimination and form two phenyl radicals. The phenyl radicals then act as initiator for the radical polymerization between the alkene functions. And if you want to say it like this, it increases the speed of the overall polymerization that is going on in the styrene that increases the chain length drastically. This mixture is then kept boiling for around an hour to give the polymerization some time to take place and overcome the effect of the hydroquinone. Meanwhile we have some time to do another test to determine whether it really is styrene. Therefore we measure the weight and the temperature of our considered styrene to get the density of the product. So I got my fancy new scale out in a 10 milliliter pipette and transferred the 10 milliliters onto the scale. They weight 9 grams giving 0.9 grams per milliliter. And as you all know density depends on the temperature so I measured that as well, to give me 19.1 degrees Celsius, just under the 20 where the literature densities are taken. But now back to our first test. To see if it has worked we have to perform a viscosity test comparing the treated product with the fresh one. And as you can see the heat and DBPO treated one is viscose and takes a long time to just make some distance. And now the fresh product. Oh wow who guessed that seems like I am no noob, but wait there is another test waiting to be done. Styrene has an even higher refractive index than benzene making glass that is immersed in it disappear. Nice, and this fits too, plus the density I measured is only a little bit off, what could be due to the lower temperature. So there you have it, with a 99% chance it is styrene. Meaning we successfully recycled polystyrene into styrene of good purity. I hope you liked this video have a nice one and have fun and do not kill yourself.